Last all at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales, a curated 5e Dungeons and Dragons adventure set in the tales of the Yawning Portal campaign module by Wizards of the Coast. Previously on Tavern Tales, skeletons are tough, or so it appears, but Drayden, Sidoric, and Yashiria are able barely to put them down. Now, after a long rest, will Oriana and Torin finally rejoin the group? Come sit down and drink with the enemy, raise a glass and toast to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So come sit down and laugh with the enemy, raise a glass and sing to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So I won't end up being alone, cause I won't drink my drink alone. So what about you? One beer or two, I'll drink to you. Tavern Tales Game 7. This is only Game 7. It feels like a million years. Really? I feel like it's it's at least double digits now. Yeah, it's not. It's Game 7. Because I like all of you guys so much. Yep. Welcome to Game 7. I will begin. Ha! I think it's fair to say that all manner of skeletons have now earned the eternal and undying enmity of the Silverkin family. (laughs) Don't, Don't you think? No matter. They rested again in amongst the bones and sarcophagi of this other dragon priest tomb, while out in the ravine itself, Torin engaged in his solitary monk routine, in recognition of some equinox or solstice of the summer or something. He was just finishing up when Oriana, coming in to check on him, said, What are you doing, brother? I am studying some ancient texts that I brought with me from the monastery. Ugh, you're such a nerd. And now... Let us peek into the adventure itself, as Oriana and Torin quickly and cautiously make their way back to the resting party. So you go into the kobold's room, you go back to the door with which you knew everyone was going to go through, and you go through and you see this dry fountain and a door, and you can hear your, gr- you can hear your party just on the other side. And you can hear your party just on the other side. And all of your, uh, your comrades are in amongst these bones of skeletons, and they are all horribly wounded. I will second wind. <laughs> no, wait, we're going to spend hit day. <laughs> They're all on a long rest right now. And during this long rest, Torin and Oriana return to you. Family, what happened? There was skeletons. Where did you come from? Where were we, Oriana? Not here. I think you guys, you you went outside to get Torin. Yeah, Torin left. Well. And then you followed him, I'm pretty sure. Let me tell you. I turned around and Torin was gone. And so I decided to find him. And I found him in this green meadow with absolutely nothing. And he's just sitting there. Buck Did he naked. have a rat sack? Buck naked. Pretty much. That makes sense why he had a rat sack. Multiple. I mean, he, he was clothed. It's just his hair was covering his shirt. So it looked well, like he, he had was so many rat sacks on him that it almost looked like he was wearing clothes. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. There, there you go. Sydney, sit up. <laughs> like, what was Torin doing, Sydney? Tell us. What was he doing? I got. What was, what was Torin doing in his day off? Torin's day off. Torin's day off. Basically studying, mastering certain new art forms. Something about the eye, I bet. Yes, I was channeling the third eye and so forth. (laughs) I picked up some new instruments, some new skills. I'm happy we're all back. Not home, but together. The Silvercan family is once again reunited. All five members are in the same room together. It has been some time, you know, a long rest or so since... They were all together. Torn has finished his day of ablutions, and everyone is once again ready to move out. You've all rested, your hit points have been recovered, and you are good to go. Torin, probably catch you up with what happened. We are attempting to find a dragon wormling named Calcric. A dragon wormling? Is that like what you ba- said? Like a baby dragon. Yeah. It's one, oh, the, but not yeah. in the bad way. Isn't that like a pup? A dragon pup? Just a reminder. I think they're called 
I it has wings. either. It's like a no. wormling. But, <laughs> but Torin has been praying or meditating or doing whatever the shit he does for a while. And I know that you just ran away just before we got our asses handed to us by a bunch <laughs> of skeletons, which I have to say is not the first time that you have left me in the lurch, Oriana. I'm just going to point that out. Actually, just I didn't point out even what, know that. I want to know exactly what it was the first time you, she left you in the lurch. Yeah, yeah. tell us. It was you that time that I asked her out on a date. That's when... <laughs> That's yeah. not what we pay her, her for. Which her? Oriana. She left us in the, out you in didn't the lurch. ask your sister out on a date. She might Slave well. sister. We're not blood. Oh, no, I believe everybody's related to me, actually, based yeah. on... No, uh, so it was that, that time. <laughs> so so what was the time before when she left you in the lurch? It was the time that I asked her to help me sell tickets in town, and she screwed off to go and flirt with some artisan boys. That sounds valid. Yep. Yeah. And then they used her as Those their sculpture for their hot art class. Artisan boys that asked oh, her. Oh, they used her. They asked her to model, and it was a thing. And I had to go sell tickets on my own. I'm not happy about it. You left me in the lurch again, Oriana. But I helped you sell them. It's true. That was a good day. I threw them out. <laughs> <laughs> so to continue, the adventure at hand. You bring Torin up to speed. Uh, you bring Oriana up to speed of the three rooms you've been in beyond. You like literally on your walk back. You're like, oh look, they went through the door. Oh look, they went down a corridor. Oh look, there's a fountain. Oh look, there they are. <laughs> Which I, I believe is what I said earlier, so oh. <laughs> give or take. But nonetheless, the way ahead is to the north. There is an open archway that is 10 feet across. Uh, it stands about 20 feet high, and it is to the north. It leads on into the distance very, very diff uh um, distantly. However, at about 15 feet in, there it opens up, and to your right, there is the remains of a decrepit passage that has been broken and shattered and collapsed and has uh, fallen to disuse over time. To the left is where the humanoid footprints go, and there is a door there. And to the north, there is a long corridor with sets of doors set about 10 or 15 feet away apart from each other on both sides. Further, uh, three sets until it opens up into a large room itself. I think we should go to the left. With the footprints? Yeah. Well, I feel like every decision the lot of you have made thus far have gotten us almost killed every single time. Well, you made a decision that didn't even involve us, so I think your vote is vetoed. Did we grab the stuff off the altar before we left the room? You're such a dick. Sorry, just to confirm, did we grab the stuff off the altar? Right. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, altar we did. That occurred back during your uh, piece before. Oh. Also, can you confirm the number of gold that Sherry <laughs> should have written down at some point? Did, you did say, we did, actually did you just get say gold? Vigeria? I always Vigeria. thought it was Vigeria. Yeah. No. <laughs> of course, I always uh, know it's Of Vigeria. course you would. Or wait, I thought it was Osheria. Yashiria. Uh, close enough. Y Lashiria? Like, why? Before you leave the room you are currently in, you see there is some treasure upon a uh, an altar. The altar contains a candle that is glowing. That's the one with the green light that's glowing in the in the darkness. Is it green? Let me just double check. Green, just a regular, green. regular candle, but it is burning without any heat, and it does seem to be burning in a perpetual state. So, it what looks color to, is it? It is a regular candle. It looks like oh. a normal candle. It's like one of those tea lights. Cool. That are yes, always lit. Better than the green, green torch, torch, I think. Oh. Well, I mean, well, you can no see difference. details better, yeah. right? <laughs> this candle has a continual flame spell upon it. You can easily tell. There is a flask. And the flask has some sort of fluid in it. As you shake it, it, it uh, sloshes around. The whistle, however, seems to be made of crystal. And it is very otherworldly in its nature. There are inscriptions upon it in dwarvish. Some writing. Does anybody Anyone? read Dwarvish? Orcish is written in Dwarvish, but I read it in Orcish. <laughs> so. I don't know who you're currently talking to. <laughs> the party. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it, you, don't, you can read all the letters, but they don't say anything that you understand. Also, I got my uh, buddy Duke Jock in my hair right now. And, and uh, I'm just going to say. Trading's ready to pay. No, I'm not. <laughs> I think we he's had useless. a deal. No, he's, he's gonna be our partner. He's gonna pay me back. No, he's not. What happened here? I don't. 
A you lot of things. That's what you get for away. leaving. I went to that find our Oriana. brother. I'm confused. You're right? And you're Yashiria. <laughs> you don't know your own family members. But not the slave ones. Whoa. That was mean. Uh, until okay. you buy back your life deed, I guess. <laughs> Dominic oh, never no. had much opportunity to open market share you, in dwarven territory so i had never had an opportunity to learn dwarvish nor did i when i was saving people in the forest as the fox have an opportunity to speak dwarvish i've never learned dwarvish thanks for bringing it up i'm sorry that was a sensitive subject <laughs> we have apparently embraced upon a sore spot for brother drayden worse than your serious I just hate the fact that I asked if anyone speaks Dwarvish and all the people who don't (laughs) told me why they don't. Sydney, do you? I'm just looking for someone who speaks Dwarvish. No, I don't think anyone does. I only speak Gobbly and Fey. What what languages does Yashiria speak? Can we... Yashiria speaks Common, Gobbly, Elvish, and Undercommon. What what language do you speak, though? Just like... Common and Infernal. Wait, what's Mm -hmm. Undercommon? It's, Why did you take it? I don't know. You took it. Isn't you deliberately that, took it. I don't. That's it's, very I strange. From the list. Right. I, I think undercommon is like the language they speak in the underdark. Like yeah, I was gonna say like isn't that like the under yeah world like so for like a different map. map. Like when did you learn that? <laughs> like you speak drow basically. That's an interesting Sweet. choice. Okay, so no one can speak dwarvish um, nor understand it. So uh, can we, can I roll to make a covering of it? On my other, uh, to you just take uh, the flute. It's just yeah, like, just take it. The, take the, the whistle. Take the whistle. And you can totally oh, take a rubbing if you needed to. No, it's oh, on the well, flute. It's on the whistle. Do my not in my speak pot, something? Then. Like because they've been living here for who knows how long. I'm sure they would have barrel for forever. So. Yeah, but in the barrel, couldn't you hear something? Uh, Torin, can you put it, uh, the whistle in your music? Uh, box? with my like, yeah, you know, with the open and I also have a glass flute. So yes, I think I should have room for it. I do have a scroll of tongues, but I feel like I have a, a glass flute and what do you a, have glass a glass what? ocarina. Sorry, I mm-hmm. think it can fit can in it my fit glass blower's tools box. You've taken the flute as well. Who wants the flask? It, uh, sorry, this one is a whistle, a whistle made of crystal. It's a crystal whistle. Whistle. The flagon with the dragon. filled with anything? Because I think I might need something at this point. The flagon, the flask is filled with something. You may take a sip of it if you wish. I want first. You may have the first sip. Yeah, I want to sip it first. Make an arcana check. Oh, okay, cool. D20, right? Of course. 23. You quickly determine as it cools your tongue of all of its heat, it's got a winter mint sort of taste to it, that it is a potion of fire resistance. Ooh, Cool. Did I oh. did I just waste a dosage now? No, you simply oh. put a drop upon your tongue to determine cool. if you could ascertain what this potion would do for so you. So I got like the f- water skin of fire breath, and you've got the. Oh, I could totally blow fire burn at you me if I run up and I'm like, ah, it's ah. okay, and I'm like, whoa, what up? That'd yeah, be cool. Yeah, I'm glad you understood that, brother. <laughs> um, can All I right. Actually, ask a question. Yes. So I actually have resistance to fire. So is that just if someone casts yeah, like a fireball? Gonna, yeah, you it get, just, yeah, fire. No, not all of it, but half. A you, burning your hands? Or, oh, so fire. just and so half if you, damage resistance. That's so, right. Yeah, so if you dodge as well, you get extra. But if she manages to make her deck save, she gets half of that and then half of that again. Uh, Correct. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, so almost yeah. a quarter well, then? That's sounding like is it's getting super advanced. The proper math? <laughs> this, is, this is extra <laughs> excess math. <laughs> I need a perception check from you, Sherry. Yashiria's not really doing anything. Everybody else is playing around with the flutes. All right, what'd you get? 14. You don't see anything special about the altar, or there's nothing unique in regards to it, so. Can I notice Yashiria being around the altar, and I come over and check? What's your passive perception score? Yeah, did you add yours, Aaron? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, 12. I'll say you see that Yashiria has paid some scant attention to the altar and had a look at it. You may also make a perception check looking the way Yashiria is looking. 
Uh, can I notice both my siblings? So 13, it's, that's pretty yes, good, Yes, of course, actually. Torin, you're not up to anything at the moment. You've walked in, you see an altar, they take all the stuff off the altar, they give you a flute, they're like, put this in your box. I'm like the pack mule. And you're like, okay, <laughs> um, and then, yes, any everybody sure. now may make a perception check I will do the, that. Uh, the altar. Roll away, yeah. 19. Okay, yeah, and you? 10. So, Torin, <laughs> you notice that there is a secret compartment in the shrine. It's one of those, like, push doors that you can't even see because it's the entire side. But you push it in a little bit and it clicks and it pops open and you can see there is a small metal box in this altar. And when you pull it out, of course, there's no traps or anything you can determine or discern when you look upon it. You pull out this little coffer. It's got a lid. There's no lock upon it. You have a quick look over it. You don't believe that there's a trap that you would find or immediately determine or discern. So you open up the top of it and inside glistens in green mm. light six peridot jewels <gasps> that have been combined like a little puzzle, like a little connecting awesome. puzzle into the likeness of a dragon. Those are one of my favorite gems in IRL. It's a very beautiful stone. I take it quickly and slip it into my bag, trying to not be noticed by. Can I do a deception check against her and try no, to? No, like, I'm slip being at very, least three very cautious. While she's trying to take especially to see whether Sidor. They're, they're in the shape of a fucking dragon. I, well, she's already taking them and putting it in her pocket. I would like to somehow finagle them. As no, Torin you is you can't to perceive it anything. Into one of his satchels. I will. Okay. Joe. All right, guys. <laughs> if you would like to secrete or secret, that's a better word. If you would like to secret these six gems away, you may totally do so. However, if you would like to hide them away from the party or at least keep them from everyone else's view, more than welcome to do so. You'll need to make a sleight of hand check. The difficulty on that is going to be pretty high, though, because you have to beat the passive perception of everyone at the table. And there are a couple people like Yashiria who have a pretty good passive perception. So if that, and you recognize, and you, you're your family, you know this, it's going to be a difficult check for you to try to do this, considering I don't think Torin is proficient with sleight of hand, right? I'm plus three. Yeah, so you're plus three. You would need to score at least a 12 or more on the die i do believe in order to beat yashiria's passive perception score so if that's something you want to do more than welcome to do so but if you don't beat it then she and potentially everyone else will see her. you attempt to do this and that might not look good in her eyes what would you like to do that's okay i'll just take them casually because i found them Sure. I won't try to be sneaky about it. So yeah, so Torin pulls out these six gems that actually have combined into like this little Parado dragon. Just so you know, it, like uh, the immediate, immediate appraisal is this is only worth about 60 gold. It's really pretty and it's quite quite nice looking. And it sits in its little coffer that it has. It, there's a felt underlie for it so that it, it lives in that little package that if you'd like to keep that, you can just put that in your satchel. So uh, when you open it though, everybody sees the glitter of the gem from the continual flame lights that you guys have. And then Torn's like, well, I'll just hold on to this and puts it in his bag. All right. Torn's going to leave again. <laughs> I don't think so. He will not leave, brother. I Torn's. might leave. What was that? He has a bad track record. For the first 30 <laughs> years of my life, he was gone. And then he showed up out of the blue. We don't need to hear your sob story right now. The life of a far traveler is complicated. You're a slave. Whoa. <laughs> it is, and I appreciate that but you- But a loyal slave. You've come back to us, Torin, and I- Let's move down the hallway and have this conversation. How about- Which hallway, sir? We have to- But I still want to know what he put what? in his satchel. I think we should go <laughs> with- we oh, used... you definitely saw it. It was, it was oh, the we did. Yeah, I thought yeah. we just saw the sparkle. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. we saw the gems. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. Let's go down and follow the footprints. So we're going to the left. To the left. To the Beyonce. left. Beyonce. To the left, to Quinn the left. Day. Yeah, you turn to go to the left. That door is a wooden door. It is not locked. You may feel free to open it or... Blow it open. Check for traps <laughs> at your leisure. Do you want to thaumaturgy it up? I sure do. Yeah, just like push it open or something. Yeah, do your magic. And also, I just want to point out, you blow that door open, it's going to bang. Whole bunch of noise. We there already are, made a bunch of here, noise. Here, Slowly. Didn't we? Here there be goblins. Uh, oh, you yeah. guys were in another room. You went into okay. the sarcophagi. You've been hiding. Um, that room's closed. I mean, I'm not going to hold that against you guys. Okay. Not you're in a dungeon. You, I would assume you guys okay. are being naturally. We're attempting quieter. to be quiet. So yeah. Maybe I shouldn't blow it open then. Yeah, I, I would think that now is not the time for theatricality. 
I, I will. <laughs> I'll push it open because I think I have the most hit points. Yeah, and do it slowly. Yeah. Like, how, how many hit points do you have? How much? 26. Yeah. Wow. 20. I'm beefy. What do you have, Mishira? 20. I'm going to push it open slowly. So Oriana chooses not to use prestidigitation on it, thinking, okay, there are dangers afoot from here on out. This is a dangerous area. I should probably, we should probably try to be quiet going forward. You slowly and quietly open the door, revealing the empty chamber that is home to only rat droppings, crumbled flagstones, and stains. The party moves into this chamber. Perceptions and investigations reveal naught in this room, for there is nothing in it. It's just an empty for a four-walled room with a door leading to the north. However, you do see more of the humanoid footprints leading from that door to the next door. Let's check a couple of the walls and whatnot and proceed forward. Okay, I'm going to attempt to open... The other door doesn't look locked? No, the other door doesn't look locked. You approach okay. that door. Give me a perception check. Well, All right. Not very good. question? Yes. Um, so are the wrap droppings there from people passing through or is there an opening above us like a gate or something that it's dropping through? They are assuredly giant rat droppings. So it looks as though the rats have been coming in and out of this room. Okay. So, by so way it's of, well We are locked. not in a giant toilet. By way of the doors. <laughs> well, you never know, right? <laughs> okay, so I only got an 11. Everybody else can also make perception checks. I'm not going to limit just one person to looking at things. <laughs> However, I am looking for a minimum of 15. But I'll come in behind free. the fox, take a look around. Not enough. You don't need <laughs> enough. You call me the fox. <laughs> and what's, <laughs> what's Torin get? And I didn't see Sidorks because it's like bright oh, yellow. I got, I I got an eight. Okay. Torin, it's up so to you. I got 14. Sorry, it's not sufficient around the board for nobody did well for Drayden to realize that this door looks exactly like the other door that you opened that had the bell on it. Oh. So when you open the door, it goes ding ding ding. It's a door. So the door opens upon a ten foot wide hall that is liberally strewn with sharp caltrops. On the northern wall, passage to the room beyond is partially blocked by a roughly mortared three foot high wall complete with crenellations. Three feet high? Yep. Like okay. across like the a room? half wall. On the other side of the room. So there's all of these caltrops strewn across the floor. And about twenty feet away from you is this poorly mortared three foot high wall that has little crenellations on it little little tower minarets sort of thing okay i'm going to use my wicked scythe to sweep the caltrops off to the side okay yeah hold on what else would everybody else like to do so they're just strewn across the floor we yeah. don't know what is under them 200 no there's stone floor underneath these these so it's no traps. many hundreds of cal caltrops does the floor look solid? Does it look like if we step on a specific It'll stone, collapse. we're going to get a bunch of arrows shot at us again? <laughs> Your weights. <laughs> Remember, I always have mage armor on. I know you know that, but I always like to say that because it makes me feel safer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I have that too. I'm like, no, 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 I have it, so I'm not that squishy. Not not quite a pin cushion. Anyway. I like how All squishy right. was like squishy. <laughs> right you, you actually spoke into the microphone that time. What would you guys like to do? I want to use my scythe to like sweep the caltrops to the side. I am not near that area. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna stay to the back. <laughs> All right. Well, then we got two magic users to the back. Where's everybody else? Where's Torin? Where's Yashiria? I'll be in the middle. I'm up front. I'll be. Puts you at number two. In the middle, but like behind Yashiria. <laughs> puts you at number two now Yashiria <laughs> as you jostle with Torrent to see who gets to be behind Drayden who gets to be, to, who I gets bu- to decide who gets to die second I budged because Torin. both of, well both of them hate dad so they never want to be number two behind you because they know I'm always number one <laughs> oh. and you're number two so really that bums them down to number three I, I dad don't. loves me <laughs> but I'm the prodigal son right anyways I look like dad <laughs> 
It's true. <laughs> so we've got the marching order. Yeah, you take your scythe and try to start to sweep some of these caltrops out of the way so nobody steps on them and hurts their feet. And two goblins pop up, surprising you from behind this roughly mortared three foot high wall, and they shoot at you. Thank God I'm not in front. They slice their heads <laughs> off later. Sweet. So the first one hits oh. and does five damage to you, and the second one also hits and does an additional five damage to you. It is now initiative. Can I try to talk to them in gobbly? Roll initiative. Oh, God, hey, no need to yell. Just kidding. Okay, so... You can on your turn. Yes, uh, they, I, would, I hope that you'll enjoy conversing with them, but they are looking to shoot an attack, so they are making an initiative roll of their own, so we'll see how things go. But, uh, Torin, what's your initiative roll? 19. <laughs> Yashiria? 11. Drayden? 20. Oriana? 1. <laughs> you get to add your dex you to that, to so... Dex oh. so... 2. Where's dex? At least 2. Three. Oh, so 3. Sidork? <laughs> 17. Wow, that's some good initiative. And the goblins get a... <clears throat> Now I know why I ran away for the last one. Between fireworks and rolls. <laughs> Not what we pay you for. Drayden, you are you first. What would you like to do, Drayden? What's the distance between me and the goblins? From a distance, uh, you have another 15 feet to go all through all of this um, maze of caltrops. Uh, how big are the caltrops? Caltrops are... The regular size of caltrops, so like less than your like, marbles, yeah. almost right. Sorry, like what's tiny. a caltrop? Yeah, right. So a caltrop okay. is. Have you seen a four-sided die? Yes. That is a caltrop, but it's sharp almost and like pointy. A I kept like hearing cow troughs. Yeah, as well. I imagine cow troughs. I literally yes, heard cow, cow troughs. troughs. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so we're in like a barn. Two hundred cow troughs <laughs> stacked. Can I? Uh, yeah, dangerous. Like can, I, cordwood. can I do something cool? No. What would you like to do? I would like to draw my wicked greatsword and jump the distance with it over my head and smash them because it's fifteen feet. You got like, fifteen feet and an like, additional three back feet up, up though. That's mad for. I know. Oh, mad horrors. Like back That's up. A, mad horrors. Back up like ten feet and like run and jump into them. I have no problem. Your all of your siblings are jump lined up behind back. you, but I have no problem with you making the athletics temp attempt to do so, yeah. um, given that your character has a super duper strength. However, the d the ability to run and jump that fifteen feet um, would normally be at least a 15 difficulty, but because you also have to clear that three foot high um, distance. Okay. I highly recommend that you also, that it's going to be like an 18 to get us to succeed. And then can I like attack with that, with my well, accenture that is, surge or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I'm, I'm going to try to. I'm giving you my mojo. To be awesome. All right. Whoa. All right, well, I did 24. Wow. Yeah, 16 at least. Oh, no, like, GG. Ow. Yeah, no, tw sorry, 22. Yeah. 22. 22. I look spectacular. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Drayden That's backs up 10 feet. Then Drayden reconsiders and backs up an additional 10 feet. <laughs> 10 more feet. And, no, five feet. And then using the remainder of his movement, charges forward, <laughs> leaps the caltrops, clears the three foot high uh, barrier. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sydney's taking her insulin shot. <laughs> That's not insulin, bro. Mm, Serves. Drayden clears the thing. You see these two goblins that are just like initially they're grinning at each other with these sharp tooth smiles. Their so their short bows are pulling out another set of arrows to like attach them. And they're like, "Yeah, let's." I'm watching you. You're watching me. We're gonna be kill these intruding adventurers. And Drayden's feet soar between them <laughs> as they look at each other and they look up. Hugga in gobbly, which is hugga 
because we and don't understand. I, understand. I understood it. And they he he lands with a roll, comes up five foot away from them, and you may action surge if you wish yeah, to do I'm another strike. Turn around and strike the goblin on the left. Action surge. Action surge. Action surge. Action surge. Wild the dice. Oh, oh fuck. That, that was, was so disappointing. Close to the 20. I know. So and you. It was a 14. Still hit. You Yay! Go back. Oh, sorry. No, you don't oh. hit. You don't, you don't hit. <laughs> not quite. Not quite sufficient. <laughs> that was Boop. cold. So just to be clear, you did not hit. <laughs> So much excitement and so much disappointment. You're, it's a great sword, is that right? Almost like yeah. when you're not there. It's a plus six. Yeah, your great sword swishes over their heads uh, and you pant heavily from your exertions. It is now Torin's turn. Torin, if you wish to talk to these goblins, you will have advantage because Drayden has them surrounded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will say Can you goblins. Speak goblins? Cease and desist. We mean you no harm unless you continue to attack us. All right. That is definitely a persuasion check with advantage based on Drayton's efficacious vault. Torin, you speak gobbly. You have reached out to these goblins. They throw their short bows to the ground and stand up, look at you like they're expecting a short gobbly woman who has like flowing messy goblin hair and they see this staunch bald white guy <laughs> do you mean staunch or squanch that's not even a word. squanch no squanch is whatever it means in your heart <laughs> have you never seen her for morty no sorry okay. yeah, that's okay because that's He's laughing so hard because that's like a quote in it where they're like, you can't just say squanch whenever you want. And they're like, squanch means whatever you want in the moment. So. Okay. Well, I'm sorry I had to explain that. <laughs> jokes aren't funny if you had to explain it. <laughs> yeah. um, it is a good joke, but sorry. No, I said shit. <laughs> Nonetheless, their jaws drop as the harsh goblin tongue drips from Torin's lips, and they look at each other with chagrin and offer their surrender in goblin. We surrender! Do we trust them? That sounded a lot like common. <laughs> Please learn gobbly. Sorry, to those who understood gobbly, that's what it oh, was. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And to the listeners at home, I would like them to be able to understand the words coming Got out it. of my mouth. Okay, no, that makes sense. Then. Raise your glass and drink with the enemy. Raise your glass and sing with the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales, a curated Dungeons & Dragons 5e game set in the Tales of the Yawning Portal Adventure module by Wizards of the Coast. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at Bad Billy Band. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at Tavern underscore Tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure. 